Let's take a look at the fourth way on how we can trigger an AWS Lambda with serverless while using Java. So this time we'll take a look at how we can schedule our Lambda invocations on a, on a cron expression. For this, uh, let's create a new function here in our serverless YAML. Let's call it simple scheduled trigger. Again, we need a handler which we will write in a second. Let's call it also simple scheduled handler here for now. And within the events, now we can use schedule. So this is from the serverless framework. And within here, we can specify a rate or a cron expression, how often uh, we want our function to be triggered. So let's pick for first iteration one minute. So the Lambda function I will write will be a simple availability check for my block. So it will check that my blog post returns 200 in a, a timely manner. So for this one minute is enough. You could also think of adjusting this to, for example, 50 minutes, one hour, or any other cron expression you like. So let's write the handler for this. Again, we need a new Java class. Well, let's call it like we specified it in the serverless YAML. Scheduled handler. Again, we implement the request handler. And now for the input and output type, we will use void as our lambda is basically just an, an execution of logic which doesn't require any input or output as it will just make an HTTP call. So here we can specify void. And what we'll now do, let's add a first statement here, what this lambda will do. So so within here, just for debugging purpose that we see that it's, it's working, let's say we want to check the availability of my block. And to actually check the availability, I'm using the Java HTTP client, which is available since JDK 11. So for this, create an HTTP client. HTTP client comes with a builder and here we can specify a connect timeout. So this is helpful to not uh, infinitely run our Lambda and uh, block at some time, maybe if the, if the block is overloaded with traffic so that this Lambda will return early. And let's say build here. For the actual request, we have to create a new object called HTTP request. This also comes with the builder let's use it here we have to pass the uri so again this will be my block here https rigpull.de import it this will throw or this might throw an exception so let's surround it with try catch here next um, also specify the timeout here so while this timeout buff here was the connect timeout with this timeout we specify the read timeout, so how long we would give this request to um, read the status or the HTML of my, my main blog page. Let's also give it two seconds here. Then we have to specify the HTTP method, which is get. And then finally, we can say build. Let's format this a little bit nicer. That's everything we need for the request. Now to fire this request, we can use our HTTP client again and say send, pass in the request, and then, it's ex then it expects a body handler. So there are some predefined body handlers. We can use one of these, which is a string. So as uh, the result of this call, we basically return the HTML page of my block. It's fine to use a string here. Uh, so we are not really interested in the, in the result. Uh, body, but rather the HTTP status code. So that's fine. This might also throw an exception. So we have to add it to our existing catch clause. And now let's assign this to a local variable. Now let's call it result. What we can now do on this result. So there are several methods. We could check headers. We can check the body, but we will check the status code. So we can write a simple check which will verify that the status code um, should be 200. So in the case here, if it's not 200, um, 
I want to be informed somehow. So this would mean my, my block is somehow not, not responding or not working properly. So within here, you could think of, I could again use the HTTP client, for example, to, to trigger a Telegram message to be sent to my personal account or use Slack or any other notification system. And in the case of a success case, we can simply add the print statement and say block is up and running. That's enough. And also like we would need an information step here if there's an exception. I won't implement this for now, but you should get what I, what I mean here. So let's build the application and use serverless to deploy our functions as we added a new one here. You could also think of making this availability check a little bit more generic and extract the actual um, URI to an environment variable and specify it, for example, here with serverless from the outside. So you could reuse it for, for several sites you want to check the availability of with a simple implementation uh, utilizing AWS Lambda. So this was now deployed. Let's check the logs. So every minute this Lambda should be now invoked and we should either see um, an exception if something happened or that it's up and running. Let's check with SLS logs hyphen F and pass the name of the Lambda minus T for trailing. We might have to wait a minute to see the first output, but then we should definitely see what we specified here. Now you can see the output here. So the first print statement we specified up here so that the Lambda is now invoked and about to check the availability. And fortunately it returned 200. So we see here the else case. So it was uh, up and running and I know that my block is now working as expected.